Guys, we've just completed a very, very surprising fuel efficiency run in this brand new Cummins. Yes, we got a Ram 3500 2020 pulling 30,000 pounds. And we've put it on our highway MPG loop and we're gonna show you how it compares against the 2020 GMC Heavy Duty and Ford Super Duty. Check this out. And this is also part of our 2020 Gold Hitch Award testing. This is cool, we have all three trucks finally, the three big dually diesels. What size is this a 34 gallon tank or what is well, 32? For 2020, they have a diesel uh, tank option, which is a 50 gallon. Really? Unfortunately, it's not in this truck. But you can this get is, it in this truck? Yes. Wow. Long bed can get it. Okay. Uh, this is a 31. Oh my goodness. So it's kind of a smaller tank right now, <laughs> but let's fill it. Okay. Hey, look, capless system. Holy cow. Kind of. You know where that came from? And the high flow nozzle. So we're using the same fill-up procedure, 30 second top off. So we wait for the click and then top off after 30 seconds. All right, let's top off. All right, we need def. Hold on. I wish they had spread those two nozzles apart in here like everybody else does. Okay, we need to wait a little bit and top off. Is that a 30 second? Yep. We reset trip A to zero, so now we can let the computer in this truck decide what it thinks we're getting, and we'll have the actual numbers off the pump, so it's more of an accurate reading. But it's always nice to know how accurate the computer is in the truck. Same procedure, obviously yep. tr the same fuel stop, right? Yep, top to roll off, top to DEF. Yep, and we're using um, 70 miles an hour as our speed. Yeah. We're running 66 mile loop, exact same loop as we did with the GMC 2020 truck. Right. And also the 2020 Ford diesel. To fill up on diesel and DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. We're gonna measure both. Diesel is first. And we got high flow nozzles. Diesel exhaust fluid. Let's see how much we use on our loop. And take a look at this. 292 for a gallon of DF and about 304. You can't see that now, but so almost the same price. So using the map, it's 66 mile loop, divide by 9.608. Final result, look at this, 6.87, basically 6.9. All right, let's do the DF fluid measurement. According to this, about 185.4 miles per gallon of DF fluid using, uh, well, maximum weight here, 30,000 pounds. When the sun goes down in the winter, it goes down. <laughs> it goes down, it's dark fast. That's the damage, 8.44. All right, 66 miles divided by 8.442 equals, whoa. That, that's huge, that's 7.8. Wow, so this almost this... made it by one? This is better than the GM truck, almost by one. Almost by that's, one. That's pretty significant. That is. All right, well, uh, let's see how the, how much depth we use. Yeah. This was a number for the GMC on the DF fluid usage, about 185 miles per gallon. Now let's calculate this one, 66 divided by 0.3. Nine zero. Zero, yeah, three nine zero. 
169. So it's diesel versus diesel versus diesel. And this is the uh, updated 6.7 liter Cummins. Is this the Cowboys and the Russians? This is the Redneck and the Russians. Oh, I'm sorry, I always <laughs> mess this up. <laughs> but What's under the hood of this 2020 Ram, is an updated Cummins engine. They updated it last year in 2019. Uh -huh. And it now has more power and it's redesigned, you know, with a new block material, but still the same displacement. This is a 6.7 inline six Cummins. Now inline six diesels are a big deal with semi-operators, with farm tractors. But what's this? This looks like this thing really sucks some air. I know it's got the big radiator, yeah. but that's like, goes to your air cleaner. Well, that's different for this year, isn't it? Yeah, I haven't seen this before quite this air inlet, but I think it's sucking air from different directions. There's also something in the um, fender well over there, but this is quite interesting. And 400 horsepower and 1,000 pound-feet of torque out of this particular engine. This is a high output. It's yeah. backed up by a six-speed ACE and automatic. And guys, I'm right here at Wagner Equipment or Wagner Rents in Aurora, Colorado, just outside of Denver. And that's Kevin who's helping me clean the Ram truck and of course the mini excavator, the CAT. This is our test trader for the big Ike gauntlet for the Dooleys, the one tons. This is a 40-foot flatbed and it's made by Northstar in Texas. We picked it up from Jayhawk Trailers. But this has got a cat on here, and you know we loaded it just about as balanced as we could get. It's got those big monster ramps on the back. It's eight and a half feet wide. It's got all the D-rings on it. It's the rub rail, the stake pockets, and it's got the, actually the, the parts you put on that has the straps in it. it. Slides into a channel on this side. You go over the top and you crank it, and you can take them all off. So it's just like what semis do for hauling big cargo. And this one has, has the black wood on they put on for us so that it's not slick in the winter when we're loading on ice and snow. Because of the air suspension on this truck, and the Ford and the GM don't, do not have it. Right. You have to be mindful of that because this eliminates squat, which is a yes. nice thing. Yes. But if you still have the same trailer with the, not a lot of adjustment, right. like we have, you have to be mindful of that. Because you can't tell the trailer that the truck is squatting because of too much payload, you wouldn't know that with this air ride because yes. it won't let you squat. You might see the tires go flat, yes. but you wouldn't. That's that's a good point is that you have to make sure you know your, your ton weight, weight, your trailer else. weight, all right. those numbers because the truck isn't going to show it that it's overloaded. So that's a good point. So how is it riding? I mean, this trailer has given us issues with all the trucks we've tested it with. Yeah, that's probably what I'm understanding. It's because of the 17.5 tires. You gotta have really good tires like Michelin's on a 16 ply tire. And we're in the smoothest part of 76. If we were to go too far, we get in the rough part and this would bounce just like all these trucks have bounced. So the trailer by itself weighs about 11,000, right? Right. We have a 19,000 pound excavator from CAT. But actually I was surprised to find out the tow rating on this Ram. 34,070 pounds. And you know how you go online on the Ram website for the towing guide? Yeah. And you put in your VIN number right. and they tell you exactly what this truck can That's do? It's a very handy website. 34,000 for a four-wheel drive crew cab Laramie. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. And we have over 5,000 pounds of payload capacity on this truck and we're using all of it. That's good. That's what you need when you pull yes. big trailers. You need all the payload you can find. Air helpers here in the rear for the rear axle. And this truck is still sitting at over 40 inches in the back. So if you saw some of the other videos where we were measuring the other trucks, they're much lower in the back. So I brought the sound measuring device. So let's let it level out. And this is always where we measure our cabin sound. That's around 64 decibels. That's really quiet, actually. Yeah, that's running about 18, 1900 RPM. Okay. So where do you think this big Cummins will fall? Oh, that's tricky Cummins. And what Ram has done with these over the years, you know, back when they were two valve, they used to get the best fuel mileage. Yeah. At this point, pulling this much power out of this engine, I don't know, but I would think it's probably going to be right between those two. That's my guess. What's your okay. guess? I, I agree with you. Uh, the comments historically on our loops that we've tested with yeah. you um, been very efficient traditionally. Uh -huh. So I, I would put it high up there. I would say seven and a half to. That's what I'll say. You think it's going to match the Ford or beat the Ford? Be close. I think it'll be close to the Ford. We always read you guys' comments and you've been telling us that 
when we're testing dualies the trucks are very expensive and that is true but that's what I told the manufacturers when they brought the trucks to us for testing I said for heavy-duty diesels show us what you have and they did in this case we have a 12 inch screen right here and this is a Laramie not a Laramie Longhorn not a limited but still total MSRP window sticker price at over 85,000 bucks and that's because it has all the luxury features the night package um, and let me show you some of the features right here this truck is equipped with adaptive cruise control system right here it also has lane departure warning this truck is equipped with heated and ventilated seats actually in the front heated in the back heated steering wheel of course surround camera 360 view you have rear view front view and of course in the bed and this is very useful for hooking up a gooseneck trailer and then of course it also has a side view where you can see to the side when turning mr truck and i found this quirk on the ram heavy duty truck when the truck is running and you enable tow haul mode and the trailer is connected like it is now you shut off the engine and then when you restart the tow haul mode defaults to off so if you don't remember to turn it back on it will be off some of the other trucks are now leaving that on on the key ignition cycle actually tfl truck is the only company that i know of that does loaded mpg on heavy duties because the epa doesn't do it the factories don't do it. well i'm sure they do just don't tell us but right. they've got to know that information here we are doing these same tests and I know it costs TFL more you know more money on fuel and all the things you have to do right. just like running the Ike takes a lot of fuel so I'm really glad to see TFL put the effort for put the money into these tests to get those real world answers that people want I mean a lot of people are going to spend $80,000 on a new truck they want to know you know what they can expect yeah. when they pull traders Absolutely. and all that so I think it's it's a great thing I, I applaud TFL truck for doing that well, thank you very much well let's see how it does at the pump let's get back okay Here, let's look at what the trip meter is saying right now. 6.3. Alrighty, well, let's see what the pump says. So far, the trip meter is a little pessimistic. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how they compare. Oh. Let's get the final number. Grab the lever straight out. I can see the side. This kind of trailer doesn't catch. 30 seconds. Here's the calculation. 66 miles we went divided by 10.989 equals six dead. Okay. It was, it's close to what the computer yeah, said. Yeah, six three is what the computer said, so six is close, but yes. I don't know, that makes it worse than the three for fuel mileage. Yeah, that's kind of surprising. That's we had a the surprise. small amount of wind today, yeah, not wind. huge. Yeah, not that it would really affect this kind of a trailer though. Okay, well surprised. let's measure the depth. Okay, let's do the depth. Give her all she's got, Scotty. Okay, that's it. Not much yeah, used. Not much depth, anyway. No, that's that'll make some people happy. All right, let's get the number. That's the DF fluid, 66 divided by 0.333 gallons. That's the depth usage, 198. Uh, it's the best of the three on DEF. You're using the least amount of DEF. Well, that's something to say for it. Okay, so you don't have to stop for DEF as much, <laughs> but you will have to stop for fuel, that's and that's true. why you need the bigger tank. That's true. Yes, this definitely needs that 50 gallon tank. Yes. Or at least in the 40s. Yeah, that result was pretty surprising. 6.0. Yeah, that I was. I'm surprised, but do you think it has something to do with the 10 speeds versus the six speed transmission? Or well, we had a tiny bit of wind, not much to worry about with this trailer, right? Not much. Um, and it does have a six speed, and the other competitors are going to tens. Uh -huh. That may have had something to do with it, but also this engine is pretty brand new about what 1200 miles on it. Yeah, so maybe when it breaks in, and maybe about you know five or ten thousand miles later, you may see a small improvement. That certainly could be, and that's how diesels are. When you first get them, they don't get the best fuel mileage. After they get a few, like 5,000 miles on, in my opinion, that's when you're gonna get the real life expectancy fuel mileage of that diesel. Yes. So that is true, that's a good point. 
And of course, we wanted to bring it to you guys first. This is why we're doing this. And go back to tfltruck.com and where else? MrTruck.com. For all of the heavy duty trucks. Yes, indeed. 